So Whatever. Akshay, Akshay, Akshay. We got the Army. We got the Navy. We got the Air Force. We're going to get the Space Force. Now, when is Salesforce getting promoted? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, welcome to Science of the Southland, everyone. <laughs> We're back after an extended hiatus because scheduling a podcast is uh, surprisingly harder than any of us thought. Uh, as always, if you don't remember us, I am Akshay Schwarin. Uh, over there in Atlanta is Jay Grant. Uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, the home of the Big Ten, well, more or less, is bro, Ethan bro, Kreger. Bro, bro, I'm going to stop you right there. The Big Ten is headquartered in Rosemont, Illinois. All right, continue. I was going to say, this is the home of the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, I'll have you know. Hey, IPFW, all right? They, hey, uh-uh, they no, it's Purdue. PFW. No, they do Indiana a it's not that. IPFW. <laughs> oh, they, they just they got Indiana. owned by Purdue? <laughs> Classic. I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Oh, look, it's Cade. It's Mr. Cade Lawson, our boss uh, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I'm outside Denver. You, I wouldn't expect you to know the difference since you're OTP trash anyway and can't distinguish, but I'm outside. <laughs> wow. Kate, I mean, you're more up? OTP than I am right now. So, What's your snack of choice right now? Wait, hang on. First of all, this guy's in San Francisco, and he just and he thinks that I'm further away from Atlanta than he is. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, my degree wasn't in geography, okay? Clearly. What's my favorite what? What uh, what's what are you currently snacking on right now? I, I see something in the background there. Shot shot shot. Oh, I'm drinking. Shot, shot, shot. Yeah, shots of honey. Yeah. What <laughs> cool kids are doing out here to get 420 or something? I don't know. Kids high on life out there in Colorado. Man, I would I thought Golden Colorado was famous for a different uh, uh, golden beverage, but that might just be my uh, mind playing tricks on me. Someone's been watching too much of the Rockies. Ooh. I feel like they advertise on everything. Coors, Light, anyone, anyone, anyone? Yeah, yeah. I, I it smells terrible. Just the plant smells awful. <laughs> I think I went to that brewery as like a 13-year-old just with my dad and my brother for funsies. Was it fun? Uh, I had a root beer. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. I think my dad had a, a sample of Coors at 10 a.m., you know, as one does. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. I learned that in Europe. Ah. It's always five o'clock somewhere. Akshay studied abroad for a while this summer. And by studied abroad, I mean was uh, an aimless drifter from city to city for a while, right? For two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Ah. Not that long. I Did didn't, I didn't go change you? That's a while. No. No. Akshay, did you go to that American meat packer bar or whatever that you were telling us about? The meat? No, it's the it's the American sports bar. It's the only American style sports bar uh, in one of the cities that I went to. I never got the chance to go, and I was very upset because it's very well named. Ah, that that's a that's a shame. As someone who was somebody who tried to sample all the Five Guys he could in Europe, you really missed out. You went to a Five Guys in Paris because you couldn't handle the craving. You yeah, paid pretty like much twenty four dollars for a burger. That's yes. worse than San Francisco prices. Yep. <laughs> All right. Speaking of things that are completely overrated and overpriced, ACC Media Days are going on right now. <laughs> Oof. So today was the well, – this is, what, Wednesday the 17th. So today was the ACC Atlantic's day, um, and then tomorrow will be the ACC Coastal's day. Here's my problem with ACC Media Days. In an age of – mass media consumption and where news services have so much unprecedented access to teams. What is the point? <laughs> you have, you have like 40 to a hundred reporters sitting in a hotel and I don't know where this conference is. Is this in Charlotte again? Yeah. To talk to one coach and two players from each team. This is kind of lame. Why when do we is your still Syracuse do this? beat writer going to get to talk to Miami players, though? You know, 
Why does a Syracuse beat writer need to talk to Miami players, though? Or Florida Why State. They play, every year. They play Florida players. State every year. Why shouldn't you get to talk to Willie Taggart? But does Willie Taggart really have anything important to tell him on July 17th? No. No, because but Willie Taggart is probably going to go two again this year. I think I FSU is going to go 8-4 this year. This year, this year Akshay. I don't know. FSU 8-4 and four this year. Book it. 8-4. and four. Back to the bowl. What year was it where they had to get like an NCAA exemption to get one of their wins to count? Oh, that was two years ago. Then they missed last year. Yeah. That was a weird year. There was an entire Reddit investigation about it. It was really fun. Everyone thought FSU was screwed. It was it was a great time. In terms of media days, I don't know. I think I think there's enough to be said, especially when you have a new coach, that like it's worth getting them like in front of all these reporters from across the conference. But I don't know. I'm also someone who almost always runs behind the time. Uh, something, something, <laughs> no DH in the NL League. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, your grandpa. <laughs> don't ban the okay, shit, though. Okay, okay, like all shit. right. Yeah, I think, in my opinion, the media days are just a bunch of wasted time for everyone involved, players, coaches, media. I mean, you have Clemson bringing back probably the Heisman Trophy favorite in Trevor Lawrence, and he's not even there at media days. They brought... Oh, there was... Uh, I don't even know the name of the offensive lineman they brought, but they brought some guy that... To be completely honest, no media guys wanted to talk. I thought the highest yeah, yeah, goes to Oklahoma's best quarterback every year. Hmm. I mean, interesting. You know, media days is a waste of time. Media days is the exact same as the home run derby, where they just put something there when there's nothing else there, so the oh. people can think like it's helpful or fun, but it's not. Don't you disparage the home run derby? No, no, no. You no, had no, me no, until I you started this in the home run derby. Who cares about batting practice? There's a home run derby before every game ever. Evidently, a lot of people are considering it sells out every year. Okay, okay. I like the Home Run Derby. Not convinced that Vlad Guerrero Jr. was one of the more deserving people to be showcased in front of the country based on his stats so far. But I think, like, you can you can go to batting practice before a game. I love it. It's great. I do it sometimes with my dad and my brother. It's great. But there's nowhere else that you can get the best bombers in baseball to just mash tanks into the bleachers. Like, I want everyone out there wearing hard hats, you know? Except for batting practice, because that's what batting practice is, too. But, yeah, I don't give a crap about random, like, utility players taking batting practice. I just want to see the good guys. Do you hate the slam dunk contest? Yes, because they miss 90% of the They're trash. It's not fun oh to watch. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing. Hey, kids, the real grandpa. No, just, I like, just, just you know sit there the in your wrongness in Colorado and be no. wrong. Okay. Listen, you know what's the best thing? The NBA skills competition. Because I love watching them throw basketballs through hoops like it's Chuck E. Cheese from 10 years ago. Wow. Kids be like, give me the bunting contest. <laughs> that would be more fun because at least bunting is like a they joke. They do contest. that. They do, they it in do Japan, that in the Japanese league. Yeah. yeah. Korea. Either one. I don't. I saw a GIF of it. It looked kind of interesting because it was basically curling, but with a baseball. It, did it really happen if Akshay didn't send a GIF of it? Oh. It's basically curling, except that it's not what you're supposed to be doing in baseball and curling is what you're supposed to be doing in curling. <laughs> That's the only difference. Curling is a weird northern sport, okay? It has nothing to do with ACC media days whatsoever. What? Full circle, baby. Full circle. Freaking ah. northerners don't know what sports are good. I know. Northerners yeah, support at least my town day. still has a hockey team. Yeah, but it's a crappy hockey team. Ah, uh, <laughs> man. I can't fit all my rings on one hand. I had to get another finger. Okay, jerk. <laughs> Oof. Oof. See what I did there? Ah. <laughs> Rip hurricane. Another thing that will also rest in peace this football season, the new SEC officiating Twitter account. Now, for God, God help them. I have no idea why they decided to open this. It is this is one of the dumbest but yet potentially hilarious decisions that a sporting body has ever made. Opening a Twitter account about on-field video review decisions. Oh, God, I can just imagine. Imagine, I can the imagine the pissed off redneck fury that we're going to see this fall. Uh, one thing, part of my take references a lot. I've been listening to that podcast now that uh, PAPN is uh, no more. Dead. But uh, they've been talking a lot about the ratio, and that's like, 
comments to retweets and the ratio on this on this account is going to be off the freaking charts man like there's going to be so many people setting those mentions on fire you don't want to click on whatever the you know how you get the like heart button the retweet button and the other button like you don't want to click on that other button no 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 no, no. i think you definitely do because oh, very much Twitter, is Twitter is a cesspool. Twitter is a cesspool. It's probably just like an FBI burner account. It's in the death threats directly to the FBI. <laughs> and get it to someone else now, and they can find it. <laughs> I could buy that. I mean, it is SEC based or SEC football, so people take that more seriously than life or death. They ain't played. I wonder what happened. I'm telling you, it's gonna cost Athens like a, a spot in the SEC title game or a spot in the playoff, and the amount of sheer just toxicity Ugh. next jake you wanted to plug something please go for it uh, oh yeah your plug. um so in addition to making this fine podcast we also have a website with articles and things and uh i think it's fitting uh we'll talk about a little later um ken segura at the ajc put out a uh money article but um this week we've seen state of the program kind of on our minds is it's the middle of the summer. Uh, so I guess Ken touches on the finances, but we kind of take a more, uh, I guess, programmatic look at uh, at kind of what tech's been up to the last year and what we can expect from them in the coming years. Um, I don't really have a sense for where I want to go from that, but uh, if you guys have any thoughts on just recapping what we saw in the spring and last fall before we uh, turn the page over to 2019, 2020. Uh, I think it's been a lot more successful. You've had a lot more teams that have had a lot of postseason success. Baseball advanced to a regional, football making a bowl game. You have volleyball going to the postseason. Um, and I think all of those things combined, including the success of sort of our track and field athletes, our um, cross country athletes, um, softball advancing to the ACC championship. You have you got a Kyle very there, good dude. foundation of success to build off of. Um, one uh, nit to pick is volleyball went to the like inaugural NIT, which is yeah, it's postseason, but not quite NCAA tournament level like they've been at in the past. Um, and I just want to point out, uh, I've been saving this for when we next did a podcast for a long time. Uh, but the coldest of cold takes I've seen in a long time uh, from our own website is, here we go, Georgia Tech Baseball, Atlanta named NCAA regional host. The Yellow Jackets will open the NCAA tournament with a massive home field advantage at Russ Chandler Stadium. Oof. Don't which, do me uh, like that. Don't do me like that. Which uh, I saw that again, and it just it just hurt my heart again. But, uh, yeah, no, baseball had a great year. Uh I guess uh, my biggest like weird reaction was I don't really know what it's like to be good and have expectation, you know, like as weird as that is to sound like I was literally just enjoying being in the top 10, top five conversation. You know, I didn't have, I don't know. It wasn't really yeah, Omaha I, bust, even I, though I, I it probably should have felt like that. I mean, Jordan Tech has a historic success of being a good baseball program but when you're talking about a program that hasn't really seen that upper tier of its sport in a while you sort of are just happy to be one of the guys you're happy to be in consideration but that next year is when you start to say this is where we should be i think this is where we were meant to be let's prove that the last year wasn't a fluke yeah, and in my mind, this year was Omaha or bust with the past failures that Danny Hall and his staff have had in the tournament of hosting regionals and coming up short. It felt like this was the year. This was the team that needed to push through to Omaha. It had the starting pitching. It had the it had the uh, big power bats in the middle of the lineup to finally make that push to Omaha. And then, you know, one bad inning, one bad pitch from Connor Thomas and Stephen Williams drives it out to right field, and then all of a sudden you have to come through the loser's bracket. And our staff was not put together under the direction of Jason Howell to be able to come through a loser's bracket and win a regional. So I think the, the next big step for the baseball program is going to be hiring a competent pitching coach to replace Jason Howell, somebody who can get our pitching staff back on track so that it's more than just the two or three top guys that have 
you know, been here for a couple of years now and Curry and Thomas because they're gone and Herder's injured and may not be available next year after Tommy John's surgery. So I think reasonably a, a pretty sizable step back should be expected for the baseball team next year. And even to the point where the goal, once again, it seems like for the fourth or fifth year in a row now is just going to be make the NCAA tournament. And obviously, as we saw this year, you know, preseason expectations can be um, way out of proportion, way off the mark because this team ended up, you know, make host and regional and get the number three overall seed. But I just don't see next year's team being able to replicate that. And I think that's kind of across all of our revenue sports, except maybe for basketball. I think football's due for a step back, at least in year one under Collins and basketball is kind of in the other situation where it's, it's now or bust for coach pastor and his staff. Yeah. Um, I think we we're going to touch on BJ elder and basketball in a little bit, but I don't know. Like it's weird to see the rug kind of get pulled out from baseball all of a sudden. And I'm not saying that's a guarantee, but like, I don't kind of, like I said, like I wasn't expecting Omaha, but you know, maybe I should have, especially like I know before the season, Andy Archer was out, but with, Connor Thomas being essentially our only remaining functioning weekend starter by the end of the season, like that there's not much that you can, you can't invent starting pitchers in the middle of the season, you know? And like, that's just the injury bug biting us in one too many times, you know, like it's like a, what if we still had Brant or what if we still had Zay or what if we still had Andy? Like that's a lot of, that's three of our top like five or six pitchers right there. So yeah, and it really is a shame it. this team didn't get to put it all together because if all the pitchers had been healthy, I I do really think it would have been the best staff in the ACC and one of the best staffs in the country, right up there with the teams who ended up contending in Vanderbilt and Michigan, along with UCLA who ended up losing in the Super Regionals. But you know there was a common theme among the guys who ended up going down from. Herder to Archer to Joseph Manley, another key lefty reliever. Yeah. Three Tommy John surgeries on that pitching staff. And Hugh Chapman, who also had Tommy John. He had Tommy John as well. Four Tommy John surgeries this year for our pitching staff and one bad back in Xavion Curry. There's trends and there's flukes. And this is most definitely a trend. And it was time for Jason Howell to move on to a new job. Yeah. Next year's recruiting class is what, number four after the draft or something like that? Yeah. 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 Number four. Yeah. I think so that news just came out back, today. I don't think you bring back enough to be number three in the country when it comes time for selection again, but if you can start developing players a little bit faster, you can probably get back to a reasonable level. Yeah, 2020 has got a fairly well-regarded class too. So They weren't helped out at all by the draft because they lost every single person who even could have gone for the most part. Yeah, but, and Amos just signed recently too. Yeah, yeah I think everyone that was drafted – all the all the upperclassmen that were drafted, I think, I think. Yeah, ran. Waddell came back, and our uh, two freshman recruits who were drafted, neither one signed. So we yeah. actually made out better than we could have. The guys who were likely to leave all left. Losing your uh, your Titanic catcher and replacing him with someone who made almost a, the same impact at the plate, if not from calling games because I know that's something Joey did that Kyle didn't really do, but you can't ask for next year's catcher to just automatically become somebody who's raking like those two guys. But you know, it's, it's something Danny Hall's seen a lot of success in and I'm not too concerned, especially with James Ramsey really having done great work in his first year on the flats. But as long as they can keep recruiting and finding uh, a new, uh, good pitching option here. I think that tech is, it's not all doom and gloom, you know? Yeah. And the volunteer coach, whose name is escaping me right now. Worked Dan wonders Jaffe, on McCann's. Yeah. Dan Jaffe. That's it. He worked wonders on McCann's defensive uh, side of playing catcher. He's a former catcher himself. And you could see him out before every game uh, throwing balls in the dirt for McCann to block. And I think he's probably a big reason that McCann improved so much on defense from 2018 over to 2019. And I think, I feel really good about him working with our several new freshman catchers along with the guys coming back and uh, Turley and Taylor to be able to put someone out there next year who is at the very least a good defensive catcher if the bat might be a little slower to come along. 
Yeah. Uh, actually, forward. I don't know if you have any more notes about uh, baseball stuff, but I did want to touch on non-rev really quick before we get into the Go rest of the it. show. Um, but uh, as always, uh, there's good and bad. Um, I did, I've done the spring sport recaps so far for the summer. Uh, men's track and women's track, they lose. Uh, all three of the NCAA qualifiers are gone. That's a bit rough. That's a lot to replace from teams that didn't have a ton of uh, notability outside their star power to begin with. Um, so that remains to be seen. Track, honestly, is one of the hardest sports to predict because mm -hmm. you never really know who's coming in. Um, and then I've also done both the tennis teams, uh, which Ethan uh, can definitely speak about too, uh, and softball. Before we get to tennis, softball, there are three true outcomes team. Looking at the numbers, they walked a ton, uh, which means they got on base a lot. Uh, they hit for power really, really well. They had one of the best uh, slugging percentages in the country too. Um, and they struck out a lot. Um, so three true outcomes there. Um, need to work on contact hitting. But maybe the walk uh, home run life works for them. But what's really got to come along a long, long way if they expect to make the postseason uh, next year is they need pitching. It plainly put wasn't too great. Um, fielding was better than I expected. Um, but, yeah, no, they, they are hitting great at the plate. Now they just need to get some pitching in the building too. The pitching always bit them in the ass. Look, Morgan Bruce kept uh, held the fort down most of the time, but there was always a, an inning or two or a game or two where she was off and then loaded loaded the bases and then had to get herself out of a jam. It was very Craig Kimbrell esque from his Braves days. Did either of you go to the Pitt Georgia Tech game? Yeah. The one, the one where they went up the nine nothing, and then we wound up winning seventeen to nine. I remember that game specifically because I forget who started it, but Bruce had to come in and clean up the mess because she was our. I mean, Morgan Bruce is our primary starter at this point, and then I think we had to pull Bruce out because Mesta wasn't clean. Uh, the next person sort of brought us to the end of that inning, that first inning, but. And I, I think we ended up winning that game because we did. We swept terrible. Pittsburgh, which was good because they only won like eight games all year. But the point I was trying yeah. to make is that that last Pittsburgh game is emblematic of the season in that the pitching imploded, but the bats bailed us out. And there just weren't enough games where the bats could bail us out for us to to be playing yeah. into May or June. So it's lots of inconsistency on the mound. For yeah. softball, it's it's sort of a similar story to baseball, but it's just it's less injury than just inconsistency. To end it on a good note, so at the risk of rambling, the the uh, hitting for power is tremendous. The young players they're trying to get in the mix look really good. Uh, I I'm not concerned about their lineup too much, other than just hit for contact more. Um, but yeah, and then as far as tennis. Women's tennis, eh, they'll be about the same as last year, I think. I don't see any jarring trends in either direction. Uh, they've got Kenya Jones back another year, which is great. Uh, she'll be good leadership again. But uh, men's tennis, I, I don't know, man. That's that, – yeah, they're playing was, with some fire here. Yeah, it was real nice to pull uh, Marcus McDaniel out of California for this coming year. He's a blue chip number four overall recruit in the country. He should have an immediate impact along with a couple of the other guys. Uh, Nick McKinney should come in and play right away. Sorry, Brandon, his brother's Nick. Brandon should come in right away and play top six as well. And then Andres Martin might also crack the starting lineup as a freshman. He uh, went out, out to London last week or the week before and qualified for junior Wimbledon, which was really nice to see that we were able to get guys now who are good enough to play in the junior slams. That's where the teams like Wake Forest, North Carolina, Texas, the defending national champions, that's where they do their recruiting is at the Junior Slam. So it's nice to see us get guys now who are good enough to compete at Junior Slams and win matches against the best junior kids in the, in the world. Yeah. Um, and then we, we're not building from nothing either. Um, freshman class last year was decently solid, and I like that we have a bar back to, uh, to kind of have some experience on top of that. So – yeah, if Thorn can develop, guys, we should be in position to host a regional by next year at least. Yeah, totally cool. agree. Um, so spring sports, mixed bag, but uh, 
liking what we're seeing from men's tennis for sure. Um, and then as far as win, uh, spring and winter, women's basketball is a big question mark. We're not getting oh, into that. I don't even uh, want to get started. Uh, oh we're not getting God. into that mess. Uh, well, that's honestly something that I'm just playing by ear. Wait until I see him in action to finally make a, a judgment call on that. Um, but uh, swimming and diving, uh, we lose Iris Wang from uh, the women's team. Um, most of our men are back, though. We lose Rod Correa, uh, who's a big piece of that, uh, the relay teams, and he's a good backstroker. But Kyle Pompidis is back. So if Courtney Sheely Hart is back for this year based on her one star from last year, then she's not going anywhere next year again. Uh, but uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens with that. Kyle's great, but I just don't see them getting in depth to actually matter in the conference picture, let alone the national picture. And then uh, volleyball, um, they had amazing uh, Michaela Dowd and Mariana Brambilla start last year out of the gates, but uh, we need them to take a step forward if. Volleyball's going to get back to the main big dance. Thoughts? Um, I don't have a whole lot on volleyball. I mean, obviously, they're still not a tournament quality team and need to continue to improve to get back to that stage. Yeah. The thing for volleyball was sort of – it's sort of a meld of that issue, the issues with uh, – well, I guess it's it's sort of the same case as softball. They were – they're really good at a couple of things, but it's just there's an inconsistency. Like they they beat they beat Athens. They put up fights against a lot of good teams. Like I, they took Clemson to five sets, if I remember correctly. Um, Pitt swept them, but they still looked competitive versus Pitt, who was one of the, the eh. best teams. Eh. They looked competitive, eh. but the thing is, it's it's that it's finding that sweet spot of consistency after a while. Um, other teams were able to sort of mark Brumbia out of the out of games completely. Yep. If I I remember talking about this with you, all, and yep. making sure that what she has an impact, uh, and also doubt as well, who had an outstanding season, like you said, making sure that they continue to have an impact and don't get um, adjusted uh, or uh, game planned out of existence uh, would would be a huge help. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's all I've got on non-rev um, and really non-football sports. So can we do a fun we do a Georgia Tech subreddit uh, poster of the week? Because I found my new favorite person. Do it. Oh God. <laughs> yes. Yes. So this is by my good friend. Um, it says math and physics. How are the physics and math departments at Tech? I'm a junior who wants to prepare in making a choice to apply to Tech or Harvard. I have straight fives on my AP test, 800 on math, two physics, chem. I have 1580 on SAT, 800 on math, and 780 on reading. I have competed in math tournaments. How possible is it for someone like me to make a four in college? I have looked at exams, and I find them a complete joke. How come people freak out about course rigor at Tech if they did well in high school? <laughs> uh, and then someone said, might want to try taking an AP English class first, buddy. And then uh, comes back at him with a, with a hot take of, I've taken AP English already. I'll send my five to your address, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my. Uh, no. Uh, what? I have no words. This guy said you're everything wrong party. with Georgia Tech in one Reddit post. He said you're probably fun at parties and <laughs> once again with the flame says. So basically, if I lock my door and study for exams, I can screw everyone for curves since everyone parties. Yes. No. <laughs> this is my no. hell right here. I'm, I like this guy. What's his Reddit name again? Okay, if you're out there listening, please don't come to Tech. Go to Harvard. We <laughs> so don't want you. For Harvard. He's going to mail his you. See, anybody who goes and nah, sets out uh, to, he's to, to ruin my curve is him automatically bad news. I, I like his competitive edge. He would hit big dingers in the home run derby, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's in the gym pumping them bicep oh curls all the time. All right. Hey, man, he he's got to work them fingers to play. Got to work them fingers. He's probably a computer gamer. That man never sees his son. His son or the son? Those are two entirely different. Oh, I'm sure. I'm very here. sure he has no children. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your mouth. Oh, God. <laughs> Seriously, though, uh, one of my favorite parts about being a tech guy is I, I appreciate people like the three of you, and I think a lot of the readers and Aww. listeners of, from the Rumble Seat 
is that we very much appreciate the work of tech as well as the the finer things, the socializing, the sports. Um, so if you're out there, not yet tech kids, know how to balance. Uh, that's definitely something that takes experience and like school's hard, uh, but it's also important to, to you know, to, in, to, to be a person. You gotta be a well-rounded person. I'll only respect you more if you have higher SAT scores and post about it. This is a fact. If you have tattoo on your SAT scores on LinkedIn, are you really a potential tech student? Oh, I got friended by a high schooler on LinkedIn who's coming here. Ooh. Very exciting times. Okay, you just got to convert him to being an econ major, and then your job is complete. He already is. That's why he friended me. Ah, oh, nice. Nice, nice. Wow. Kate has found his person, his people. No, There's, yeah, I, I don't know how he my name. There's dozens of them, Akshay. Dozens. Yeah. All right, what else do we got here? All right, so ESPN's uh, former ACC blog writer David Hale uh, released his preseason positional rankings for the conference, um, and Tech was last in, I think, last or second last in every position other than special teams. And running back. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not good. And I remember seeing a couple of tweets from players who were also very upset about those projections. Uh, so what did you all think? Uh, do you think Hale is on the money or is there a little bit more to the story? So let me preface all of these comments with a couple of things. Number one, I am a massive Georgia Tech football fan. I bleed gold and white with all of my heart. I love my school. I promise you I do. Number two, I am a huge David Hale fan and very uh -oh. much appreciate his work on Twitter. Oh, no. Yeah, you probably know what's coming next. Oh, no. I I tend to agree with what Hale for said drop. for the most part in ah. his different positional previews. Not to, be, uh, not to be rude here, Ethan, but it's the traditional wet blanket. <laughs> yeah, and I actually think Hale was giving us too much credit on special teams, especially, I, especially, pun not intended, but we'll go with it. Yeah, large punting son, great. Yeah, Wesley Wells, awesome. Yeah, Wanye Thomas, good job. But I will, I, I dream at night, and when I have nightmares, I'm standing in the South Florida sun, perspiring. Not well, watching back to back kickoffs, getting returned, and getting yelled at by angry, short, little green clad South Florida Bulls fans about how amazing their return unit is. And I don't think that's their return uh, unit being amazing. I think that's our coverage being terrible. Yep. And I think that's a reflection of the level of athletes that we've had on this team the last year or two. And unfortunately, that I think we're going to have this fall that we just don't have the guys in backup roles who are running down the field on special teams units who are fast enough and strong enough to get off a block and make a tackle to help the large punting son and the former walk on kicker out. Yeah, see, the thing here is that the emergence of GT Twitter Army has made it impossible for the big J journalists who seek to be heroes of truth like us. Difficult to do our jobs because I get so many threats these days from GT Twitter Army. Um, but special teams we talked about, I don't understand why they're there. Uh, I understand why the rest are where they are. I think they kind of threw running back up to the top just because we had a lot of them. Um, I yeah, don't know. I don't really think there's a ton of quality there either. We just have a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. So you'd see it be different if we were still running the same offense as last year. But given the transition and the amount of flux there is in the roster, it's going to be that kind of situation. Yeah, I think the GT Twitter army and the – the uh, new energy that Coach Collins has given our uh, team and our fan base has kind of diluted our expectations for this fall because th the truth of the matter is that our roster just doesn't have a lot of talent. It's not fit to play either scheme that it's going to be playing this fall. And so there's going to be growing pains and there's going to be losses. And I think some people have not yet accepted that those two things are both going to happen. I'm not a, I've never been a downer. There's a reason I like to write the best case scenario article, but I don't know. You got to be realistic too. It's really disappointing to see our entire defense ranked either last or next to last and against the other ACC schools, but I also understand why. 
you know, on the back end, we were historically bad on third and long and just against the pass in general last year. And then at linebacker, we just don't really have any impact players coming back who were outstanding for any stretch of time last year. And then on the defensive line, we've lost so much and just don't have the depth that schools like Clemson and Georgia have where they can just reload with all conference level players on the line. So I just don't see us being able to stop the run consistently or generate pass pressure. Yeah, sorry, Ethan. Uh, I, I also think it's a little uh, unfortunate that our fan base is kind of putting their expectations in the cloud right away. Not that not that it's a bad thing, but like I just don't want them to be disappointed uh, or whatnot and fall away. Not that I'm saying they will, but it's still a concern. I, I think part of the problem is you have a large contingent of fans that just really, really hated running the option. And anything, anything that looks different is something that they will put their full support behind. And I don't think that's necessarily a particularly smart, uh, smart move, one, to hate the option and refuse to watch games with all your heart but you're putting a lot of eggs into one basket and hoping that a change in scheme will be will heal all wounds per se all right we're gonna see uh how big of a deal the optimism is when we learn if it's long-term optimism or short-term optimism so when the results start coming in from this year and all these people who are currently comprising gt twitter army are freaking out all of a sudden uh that'll be really bad that's how you become kansas but if it's the results, oh, are- don't put, don't you put that evil on us, Ricky Bobby? But if Kansas has a winning basketball team, would that be that bad? I would love to have their basketball program. Cool. But if it's long-term optimism and they're still feeling good, even when it's not looking good, um, then you're still going to see fan support and still going to see a strong future for a rebuild. Yeah, uh, I'm not convinced yet that uh, our OC is a mastermind schemer yet either. So that's kind of something that's been where I find most of my reticence, you know, like I, I get what we're losing and I get the personnel kind of stuff, but I just don't have a good sense for how this specific implementation of this honestly pretty vague sounding scheme is going to get applied to our offense attack. Yeah, and hey, what part of a pro style spread offense doesn't sound incredibly buzzwordy? <laughs> From what I can glean, it seems like Pat Nod's very good at molding his scheme around what he has, but my reservation lies with how creative we're going to be on offense. Mm-hmm. Which kind of ties back to the fact that it's going to be a rough year for the anti-option crowd when they realize that so much of our offense is either going to be read option out of the gun, speed option out of the gun, or screen passes, which are more or less just tosses to the a backs. It's going to be just our old offense in a different format. I think it, some people may not understand that what we were running wasn't really all that different from what the modern day spread but offense. But it's not. Is. But it's not out of the two back set. That's all that matters. That if is all that matters to them. If we come out running a wishbone play, first play of the game against Clemson, you know, I love it just for the memes. And I feel like if I say that enough times, it'll happen. But you're 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 honestly right in that so much of and there was a great project on SBN uh, about this a couple months ago, like the history of the option, but so much of what we consider pro style football is Schemes that really aren't that new. I don't want to say cutting edge because obviously they're they're changed, but it's coming from somewhere. Like the Ra- the Ravens have Paul Johnson in their coach's room to coach up Lamar Jackson to to implement op- option features to their offense because that's the latest and greatest thing. Paul Johnson is what a significant non ignorable chunk of our fan base derided as like outmoded and outdated and. A high school offense. The Ravens are not a high school football team. All right. What else do we got to talk about? Let's see. We have so switching gears to another uh, revenue sport. Men's basketball hired BJ Elder uh, a couple of days ago, I believe, uh, to be another assistant coach 
given that I am an extreme college basketball novice, and I also don't know who BJ Elder is, Ethan, please tell me who this is and what he is going to be doing. So, okay, who this is, I'll start with that part. BJ Elder was, I believe, a three-year starter for Georgia Tech before he turned pro. He was all ACC his freshman year, which was the 2001-2002 season. I think so. Yeah, and then he was all ACC his sophomore and junior years. And then, of course, his junior year, we went to the national championship game and lost to UConn in what was our best shot at a revenue sport national championship since football in 1990. He averaged, I believe, 15 points and seven rebounds on that team, starting next to Jarrett Jack and Will Bynum in the backcourt. But And then what his responsibilities will be with this new job so ostensibly what the uh, director of player personnel does is deals with all parties involved in planning basketball related activities that the coaches don't need to deal with and the players don't need to deal with. So he deals with people from the school. He deals with people outside the program. He deals with getting the players things like gear, food, other necessities they have. And he also kind of hangs out near the court area during practice and can give you know one-on-one -on -one advice and a little bit of coaching on the side, which is why it's nice to have a guy who's played basketball and even has Georgia Tech connections there as the director of player personnel. But his connections to local AAU programs are the real reason I think he was probably put there. And even if he can't go out on the road and recruit, when they bring in recruits for official visits, having a guy like that with you know Final Four experience is a good guy to have. Who's your replacement? He's replacing uh, Mario West, who uh, was also a former Tech player. He was in that role for, I think, two or three years. Mm -hmm. He left to pursue an uncertain future in coaching. He did not leave with another job uh, secured. I'm not sure what he, role he's going to be taking on this fall. He also played in the the good old big three that they've started up. He was part of that, and I could definitely yes. see him you know, getting into that at some point. Yeah. Okay. Sidebar. That league does look fun. I'm not gonna lie. I won't watch it because I I honestly don't know where I can, but it does look like they're having a lot of fun. I think the best part is that uh, they partnered with some online payments provider to do their prizes or to sponsor their prizes. So basically, <laughs> they're taking out a big phone instead of a big check. Uh, at at their final game, and they're hitting a button on it to send money to everyone. It's my favorite gimmick in a in, for a championship check I've ever ever heard of. Interesting, interesting. We're going to Venmo World. We're going to Venmo World. There you go. Yeah, Ethan um, doesn't sound like BJ's gonna have a ton of clout. Like, my, it doesn't sound like it's gonna solve any of my lingering frustrations with the program be it scheduling or honestly recruiting losing every recruiting battle it seems that we're in and uh you know like it, it just doesn't yeah. seem like at least immediately like i get that it's a good hire and it seems like a good fit but it doesn't seem like it's one of those like program changing directions you know no no matter how much or how good your uh, dpp is at the end of the day, he's not even an official member of the coaching staff. And you'll get one head coach and three assistants. And yeah, Julian Schwartz had this role before getting bumped up to a full-time assistant. And it is a stepping stone to a full-time assistant's job. But it's not going to dramatically change the direction of the program, which has definitely not been up over Passner's career. You could debate whether it's been stagnant or down, but it hasn't been up. Is that what Sudis does for football? Player personnel. Suds. Uh, is it Sudis or Suds? I can never know. I think it's Suds. Suds. Okay. Suds is the general manager. Okay. And, you know, he's not in charge of signing players, at least to pay them. He's maybe in charge of signing them in the letter of intent world. But, you know, he's just in charge of uh, hosting recruits. It's a very football specific position. Yeah. What he does is a little part of the DPP's job. But with yeah. a smaller team and fewer operations, there's so much more that he does as well. Yeah, makes sense. Because it sounded like it wasn't all of the students. Yeah, he also uh, has to make sure that the players go to class and like go to tutoring. He's in he's in charge of that too. He just oversees everything more or less. That's not that's cool. They are right. students, students as part of their student athlete title after all. 
Yeah, they have to all wave at Mario when he comes by and make sure they're in class. I think I saw the basketball guys in uh, my HTS class doing that at one point, but I just didn't know what was going on. So Yeah, they have like a little note pad he's writing down to make sure everybody goes to class. Mm -hmm. That's how you keep them eligible. <laughs> Apparently that's a problem here, so... Yeah, it has been, sure. Just don't use your three strikes in one season, right? <laughs> or take any recruits to Magic City. <sighs> hey, that was alleged. It didn't. No <laughs> one knows it if it proven. actually happened. Why did he get fired then if it was just alleged? <laughs> Allegations that weren't proven true. Well, basketball ought to be something this year. They'll play the games. Anyway. If basketball can get Usher and Parham eligible by the time conference play starts, we have a chance. And the sooner the better. If they're eligible for fall semester, even better. But if both Usher and Parham are eligible and we can run a lineup of, like, you know, Alvarado, Parham, uh, Shimbari, or Evan Cole, and then uh, Usher and Banks out there, that's a that's a competent ACC starting lineup. So we'll see. What about DeVoe? That's who I was forgetting. Yeah, he's, he'll, he'd be the fifth star instead of Shambari. Yeah. That's a competent ACC starting five with some nice bench pieces. What? I'm down for that. We're going to have competence? That's, I think if that five is on the court, we will be an okay basketball team this year. What? That's awesome. Which is uh, a departure from what that program has been recently. Yeah. Yeah, and it might even have some offense. It's How hard to believe that they went to an NIT final. Two seats. Two seasons ago, right? Yeah, three yeah. seasons ago now. I still maintain that season was a fluke. Oh, it definitely was. But definitely. Yeah. Dude, y'all are all on crack. Our season went down the hole when my man Vester left the program. There's nothing left <laughs> without him. Nothing. I'm going to miss AD Gay, my long, lanky pal, you know? But Yeah, exactly. And then Vest was the other long, lanky guy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the issue is going to be if Banks gets in foul trouble, we're going to be running out either Evan Cole or Moses Wright or Jordan Usher at the five, and that's going to be a mess. We're not going to be yeah. able to see Moses and his short shorts just just tearing it up, you know? Ethan, congratulations. You have officially game planned for every ACC team on our schedule. Yeah, just imagine us running uh, Moses Wright at the five and uh, Jordan Usher, if we're lucky, at the four out there against a UNC team with – three or four skilled bigs who are 6'10 or taller. <laughs> yeah, we have no chance. This is but, the, uh, yeah. the basketball equivalent of just smack it right at Mariana Brambilla because she can't hit it if it's right at her. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get bullied when we ACC play rolls around, but we'll be able to shoot, hopefully. Maybe. Yeah. That was hard to come by last year. But in the meantime, what the heck are we going to watch? Because uh, football doesn't start for another month. Whoa, that was a bad transition. You should. It's you better should than one pretty good transition for that. Uh, it was boo. natural. It flowed. Boo. I do the transitions around here. <laughs> anyway, around what is everyone watching over the next two weeks before we get our preview started? Well, I am now an Atlanta transplant. I'm no longer in Atlanta, but I will be watching the BB&T Atlanta Open ATP Tour tennis event live from Atlantic Station just north of Georgia Tech's campus next week. Wow. Jesus, did you have that one typed out and prepared? I did not, but I still have never been to a BB&T Atlanta Open, which I'm very sad about. Hopefully next summer is the year. Ah. I think nice. Jonas here takes it again, in case you're wondering. The ex-Georgia Bulldog. Oh, wait, no. Ew. Not interested anymore. Gross. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm going to keep binging some 8-bit baseball on YouTube, courtesy of Foolish Baseball. And if you haven't seen his uh, two-way player revolution video that he dropped a couple months ago, and you're missing Tristan English, and you go, I don't want him to not pitch or not hit. Maybe he doesn't have to choose. Um, but other than that, I watch a lot of Cubs baseball. Uh, there's not a lot going on. Actually, you can probably tell you about soccer, and they can tell you about oh, the Braves. Oh, oh. But if you oh. want to know anything about Chicago baseball, that's what I'm going to be sticking to. Oh, let me tell you about what's going on in soccer. So you have a women's national team coming off of a World Cup win. I think Jake just muted me so he doesn't have to hear this. Uh, you know, women's U.S. women's national team coming off of a major World Cup win. Okay, 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 okay. Can we just time out? I was in Chicago for 36 hours, uh, and this man and got a team that I wouldn't go is... see the World Cup uh, trophy that was very inconvenient to my very specific 36-hour plan <laughs> to see a Cubs game. So, 
mind you, I have a little bit of a reason. He should have gone and seen the Women's World Cup trophy. He's he missed a golden opportunity to see a golden trophy. Anyway, <laughs> the men's team is completely rudderless. It's fine. No one knows what it's doing. It'll figure itself out. Probably, probably not. Uh, in other news, you have uh, Atlanta United doing Falcons level mediocre. So if you're into more more of that, there's your boat to have. They're, match they're on in food. second in the East now, though. For like an hour until the other games get played. Maybe. More or less. But but the saving grace of, of Atlanta sports right now, the one, the only Cobb County Braves that are now at the top of the NL East and lead by, what, six and a half games? <laughs> six and a half, yep. Well, give me six. Give me the six and a half game over. lead. It might, it might end up being like 2011 again. It might not. Who knows? I'll watch. I don't have anything better to do. Yeah, Braves, Futurama. We're probably going to mix in the gif of the kid who gets a rock on his skateboard. Um, <laughs> that's it. It's funny. Yeah, I'm oh. very interested to see who the Braves add at the deadline. There's a few good options out there for the back of our pen or to shore up the starting rotation. Mike Miner. Give me Will Mike Smith. Miner. Question. I got a question. A legitimate question. Why do the Braves not have the freeze on their bench, their 40 man, as a pinch runner? I wonder the same thing. He's a talented for man. The same, for the same reason that Ted Turner can't be our owner and manager. I think they'd give up the promotion for the speedy speediness on the base pads. Ethan, I want the, the light no blue uh, thing on <laughs> under the shirt still. <laughs> With the jersey over top, and he's got the goggles on. He's ready to pinch run. Mm-hmm. He only needs to be on the playoff roster, I guess, because like that's the only yeah. time you need that random Terrence Gore speed demon, you know. But yeah, Dave Roberts. I'm here. They call it. Billy Hamilton. Tell him he doesn't have a job no more. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say D Gordon. All right, let's see. R.I.P. Billy Hamilton. <laughs> let's see. What other housekeeping do we have to take care of? Yes. So there. Uh, SB Nation has started doing the Fan Pulse Top 25 uh, for its college football teams. Uh, it demoed this with its NFL teams last year, its NFL blogs last year, um, and it was actually it was actually pretty interesting. Um, so if you're into that, we have a post up on the site right now uh, talking about how you can get involved. It's basically like a, a college football playoff selection committee invite. I mean, you're 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 being a well-regarded resource for the rest of the internet to determine how good our football team is in relation to others. So have fun with that. What do we have left? We have prop bets. Oh dear, who has one? Over under uh, number of snobby British people who think that the British Open is the only true golf tournament this weekend. I don't Ooh. care what the number is. Give me the over. Oh, over. Yeah. So far yeah. over. Oh my god the open is great but also i only watch golf when tiger is back so i haven't also watched golf, golf is supposed to be played on courses with trees and not bunkers though like holes in the ground that were dug by men over under braves playoff series wins georgia or no uh number i was gonna it's like a saban or uh Playoff, Braves playoff series wins or Georgia Tech football wins this year? Like, you mean total, like, each individual series or just, like, playoff game wins? Take your pick. I was thinking total series, but then I realized there's only three series. So, uh... Well, if you're going by series, yeah. give me the give me Georgia Tech. But if you're going by number of wins... Yeah, number of playoff wins, I'd take the Braves. No, I, I'll take Georgia Tech on both. I have no faith in any Atlanta team in the postseason. I'm too broken at this point. I think I'm the Braves get the NLCS and lose the Dodgers. If the playoffs started today, I think it's Bravo's Cubs in the NLDS. So, uh, it is, yep. We totally <laughs> haven't blown that series two seasons in a row, including a nine-run meltdown in Wrigley. In the- we went like five and one against we, this year. Yeah, we were, yeah. I think we were five and two against the Cubs this year. This year, I think. Or no, I would much rather see the Cubs than the Brewers in a potential divisional series. 
I would rather see the Braves than the Phillies. But actually, no, I'd rather see the Phillies. I, yeah, I was going to say that you would be alone in that, I think. <laughs> but, uh, hey, man, whatever gets the Cubs to my doorstep, I'm a fan of. I'm going to stop you right there. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll probably be on your podcatchers again soon. Uh, have a great next two weeks, and we will see you later. Peace. Oh.